Hi there, Laura Wilson from God Style Work here. Today I'm going to show you how I pack up a painting to post. I've got six paintings that I need to send to an art show and I'm going to show you how I pack those up so they're safe getting there at the other end. If you are entering any art shows, just carefully read your instructions because they all have different instructions on how to tag the back of your paintings. Some of them will want a swing tag that will flip over to the front. Some of them will want a tag attached to the back as well as a swing tag. So just make sure that you've read your instructions really carefully and follow those instructions because if you don't tag the back of your painting properly, for an art show, sometimes they won't enter it into the show for you. So just be aware of that. So I'm just going to go through some of the materials I'm going to use. So when I pack a painting, I use the double boxing method, which means that you use two lots of cardboard. So first of all, I will use some protective paper. Now this is um, glisson paper, which you use to protect your artwork from anything sticking to it. It's kind of like a waxy tissue paper, but it's not. It's specially designed for artwork. And I'll be using some corrugated card. And I'll be using some bubble wrap. And I'll also be using another box, which will be the final posting box. So I'm just going to show you how I do one painting first. I've got my protective paper here. And I'm just going to measure out roughly how big I need the paper. I'm not worried about the back being covered. I just want to make sure the front is covered. So I'll wrap this up a bit like I would a present. And I'll just take the corners down. So that's just protecting the front of that painting. So the next thing I want to do is I want to cut my cardboard. And this time I want my cardboard to go all the way over the painting. So I just measure it with the painting so I can get it the right size. And the cardboard's got handy little lines in it so you can cut it straight. On. I'm not going to do it with the corrugated side against the painting because I don't want any of those lines with the pressure inside the box to end up affecting my canvas. So I'm going to turn it over to the smooth side of the painting, the smooth side of the cardboard, sorry, and put that on that way. And I'm also going to do the seam where I do it up on the back of the painting so there is no lumps on the front. I make that nice and firm and then stick that together with some tape. So 
Now I don't want it slipping out of its little sleeve, so I'm also going to just tape around the ends there. the other end as well. So I'm not sticking that onto the painting, I'm just sticking the cardboard together. next thing I would do with this painting is I would do the bubble wrap. Now the bubble wrap again you want to go all the way over the painting and around the sides this time. So you want to protect it from any knocks or bumps. bubble wrap my first instinct is always to um, put the bubbly bit against there but in actual fact apparently you're supposed to do it the other way around so the smooth bit goes against your parcel and the bubbly bits go on the outside If you're wondering about what this tape is that I'm using, it is just a normal cellar tape. It's just been printed with Gold Star Work, which is my artist name. little parcel and if I was just doing this one painting I would then box that up in a box suitable for taking to the post office for posting and making sure that this parcel cannot move inside the box but because I have to do six paintings and I'm going to put them all in the same box I'm going to go ahead and wrap the other ones I'll show you how I do two the same size together rather than individually wrapping them these two paintings here that are the same size they will fit together nicely I'm going to go ahead and wrap them in their protective paper first and I'm going to do that individually those paintings wrapped in their protective paper and now I'm going to get some of the cardboard. So I've got two pieces of my cardboard and I'm going to put one on top of there with the corrugated bit up and then I'm going to put corrugated bit down and stick the other painting on top so I'm sandwiching that in there so the corrugated bits aren't against the actual painting. I'm going to get my piece of cardboard to wrap around the whole thing.
on the smooth side inwards. Make sure my tags are in properly. Having a um, tape gun really makes this a lot easier, I have to say, than fiddling around with little bits of sellotape. And I'm just going to sandwich those together, make sure they're not going to come out of the ends, so there's no movement inside there. So that's how I do two together and then I will go ahead and put the bubble wrap on it just like I did with the last one. So I've got my two paintings together inside of there, got my bubble wrap measured out with the bubbles on the outside, the smooth part of the bubble wrap on the inside to give it maximum protection from knocks and bumps. For an art show, I don't want to wrap it up so well that they have a hard time getting into it. So there's two of my pictures done. I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest, and then I'll show you how I put it in the box for posting. So I've done all the bubble wrapping and packing for the first lot. This is where we get to the double boxing method. So the first lot of cardboard is the first box. And then the second box is what you actually send it in. And I've got these big cardboard boxes that you fold up yourself. You can trim these to size if you need to, but um, if you don't need to, then it's a lot less hassle. And this particular parcel is a bit like a really annoying jigsaw puzzle because it doesn't quite fit. So what I'm going to have to do is... I'm going to have to pack in between where it's not fitting with some bubble wrap so that I'm not having pressure points anywhere where I don't want them. So I'm going to end up having to pack underneath things. So like when this, how this one's sitting a bit on top of that but it's got nothing under there, I'll have to pack under there. So with these boxes you just fold up the edges and take them together, which makes life really easy. So I think what I'll do is I'll take the seam together first. spare bubble wrap because what you want to have is you don't want the pictures to move under there you don't want them to move around in the box while it's being parted so you want to pack them in well so that they can't slip around inside the box because there's less likely to be damage if the, box, if the um, paintings cannot move And I just need a little bit of bubble wrap to fill in that gap in the side. So I don't have any movement down this end. And the other end is pretty snug. There's a little tiny gap, so I might just grab a little bit more bubble wrap for that bit. Now where these bits here is got gaps as well. I'm going to need some bubble wrap on here and some bubble wrap here. This is purely to make sure that they don't shift around in the box so they're all nice and snug in the box because I don't want it moving around while it's being carted because that's where you get damage done. If they can move in there, they're less likely to get damaged than if they're snug in there and they can't move. So 
but it all looks pretty snug. And then I can just pop up the rest of the box. So I've got all three sides. I've just got one side left. And now is a good time to just check that you have remember to put everything in there because sometimes you'll need to put a piece of paper in there. In this particular show, I don't need to because they've got a specially printed sheet for the outside of the box with the information that they want on it. But just make sure that you have put whatever you need to in there because it's really annoying once you've taped all the box up and then discover you've forgotten to put something in and you have to undo it all. So I just wanted to show you how that is all tightly packed inside there. So once this is folded down, nothing inside that box will be able to move. And that's what you want. You don't want things wriggling around in there. So I've got my basic tape on there, the basic box, and hey, give it a wriggle. There is nothing moving inside there. So nothing can move. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this box up a bit more. And I'm going to make sure that I leave a side that's not too heavily taped with open me here so it's just easier for the people unpacking at the other end. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos, then please subscribe so I know that people are interested and I'll keep making more videos. But that's basically how we pack up paintings to send to art shows. This is also how I pack up paintings when I want to send them to people who have brought them online. But I obviously, if it's just one painting, it would be just one painting in a lot smaller box. But this one, I was showing you how to do multiple paintings as well. So when you're taking up your box, think about where it's travelling to and um, the weather it's travelling to, if it's likely to get wet or rained on you want to make sure you cover up all those edges and that nothing, no water can get in along the edges because you don't want any water seeping into your parcel if you can help it and the bubble wrap will help protect against that too. I know some people wrap their stuff in plastic bags or things as well before they put it in the box but I don't do that. And then you put your um, address on the front and always put your return address on the back and um, make sure that your address on the front is waterproof as well because if it does get rained on and all the ink runs off they're not going to be able to tell where to take it to so it's just a little tip from me to you so you don't want that to happen. Alright happy painting everyone and I'll see you next week. Bye!